an antique brass model steam engine part one. The initial examination to find out what the problems are. This engine was sent to me by a customer, a man called Mike. And Mike told me that it was a bit of a family heirloom and it had been in the family for a long time. Whatever the condition of this engine currently is, I aim to improve it and perform a sympathetic restoration. The engine has a small pulley fitted which is held to the crankshaft using a slot headed grub screw, but as usual this is broken. I will make and fit a replacement in due course. The engine components are mounted on a substantial piece of brass sheet. This is quite a thick piece of brass and it's more than adequate to support the components. And here are the components, it's a simple single cylinder engine fitted with a slide valve and a steam chest and a simple tubular type crosshead guide. So what is it? Where did it come from? I know nothing about that, but to me it looks to be either a Bassett Loke engine or even a Stevens model dockyard. When I look a bit closer at this engine I can see one or two refinements. It has a split big end which is adjustable. In this clip you can clearly see that it has a fish bellied eccentric rod. This is a very good idea to stop the rod bending when it's under pressure. I'm going to attempt to run this engine and the first thing I've done is oiled every part of it. I've also injected plenty of oil into the steam chest. I removed the massive nut on the end of it just to have a look how it was put together and I noticed some sealant and that's not required so here I'm wiping it off with a piece of cloth. I connect the airline and... Well, after a fashion, it runs. The owner of the engine said that it did a couple of turns and stopped and locked up, but I'm not finding that. I did, however, inject plenty of oil into the steam chest, so the cylinder's getting plenty of lubrication. I have a sneaking feeling that the cylinder was bone dry. I'll try it again. It's a bit of a rattler and things are moving around, but at least it does run. Looking at the amount of play on some of the components, the big end for instance, really does need adjusting. This is not going to be a rebuild, I'm going to repair this engine, so you won't know that it's been repaired, I'm not going to polish it up, I'm not going to clean it, because this is the way it is. I'm not being lazy, but the patina, or patina, whatever you want to call it, is quite important on an engine of this age. However, externally it may look a bit rough. I'm going to work on the mechanical aspect of this engine from the inside. When it was running, although I didn't show it in the video, I put some pressure on the flywheel with my hand and there was very little power available. I'm going to start by removing the steam chest and having a look inside. And my small red plastic box is at the ready to accept all the parts that are take off the engine. When I look inside, I get quite a shock. There's a large spring, and someone's attempted to soft solder this to the valve spindle and the slide valve. Not a good start, really. As with most subjects, it's a good idea if you know something about what you're playing with. I've been playing with steam engines, well, forever, most of my life. I've had a lot of experience working with steam engines, and I do fully understand how they work. This is not good, a standard bolt which drives the valve, I will replace that with a proper pin. The outer edges of a thread on a bolt are less than perfect as far as being a bearing is concerned. With the slide valve and the steam chest out of the way, I can have a look at the port face, and for its age it's not too bad, but it needs a bit of attention. As this old engine has obviously been run without any oil in the steam chest to lubricate the parts inside the cylinder, the port face isn't worn as bad as I thought it would be. I'm just cleaning it up here with a piece of Scotch-Brite to have a closer look at it, and it's really not too bad. Before anyone gets confused, I'd just like to mention that the oil that you're seeing inside the steam chest on the slide valve and the port face of the cylinder is the oil that I applied before I ran the engine a few minutes ago. Using some 400 grit wet dry sandpaper, in this clip I'm cleaning up the face of the slide valve. And it looks to me like the slide valve is made from a piece of steel. Maybe it isn't steel, but it looks like it, and it's a bit rusty. 
I want to have a look at the condition of the gland packing. This is a stuffing gland on the steam chest. I've removed the nuts and what I find inside is some extremely hard gland packing. That's been in there for many, many years. And as you can see, the engine has been run dry because the gland packing that I've just pulled out of the steam chest doesn't seem to have any oil on it anywhere. I removed the end cylinder cover to have a look at the piston. I need to remove the piston and it's held in place to the crosshead using one brass bolt. There's a matching flat on the piston rod, which is how it's held in place to the crosshead just by the pressure of this one bolt. A very simple principle, but it's worked fine for a lot of years. Once I removed the small bolt, I just slid the piston rod out of the crosshead. And here's the piston on the bench looking quite scored. The owner only sent me the engine because there is a boiler with it, but I don't want to work on that, it's made from steel. Problem is, he only runs it on compressed air now. A small pot boiler supplying low pressure saturated steam would probably just about supply sufficient lubrication because the water becomes the lubricant. But obviously running the engine on compressed air, all the engine's going to get is air. Discounting the amount of oil I pumped into the engine, when I removed the soft packings from the piston, they were quite soft and really smelt of very old oil. But the combination of the graphite on the graphited yarn which you use for packings and the old oil saved the cylinder, I think. Relative to the jobs that I've been working on recently, this is a very simple job for a change. I spoke to the owner and gave him a price for fixing it and he's agreed to it. That's why it's already partially dismantled in what is just the first episode. Basically, the bearings need adjusting. The port face, the slide valve, and the rod that operates the slide valve need a bit of attention. The piston needs repacking. The glands need repacking, both on the piston rod and the valve rod. And then I have to make gaskets for both the steam chest, steam chest cover, as well as both front and rear cylinder covers. Here's the story so far. The engine came to me in one piece, and now it's a box of bits, but that's the way of things. I hope to get this engine running very well indeed, and provided that when the owner runs it, it continues to receive some sort of lubrication, it should run for many more years. That's it for this introductory episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.